Some heartbreaking moments today following that six alarm fire at an apartment complex in Redwood City that killed one person. I remember I was screaming from the top of my lungs, shaking like a leaf, and just pulling my eyes up to the sky and asking for help. Um, because it's so, so powerful, you cannot do anything. It's an interesting thing when you pull up and, and they don't have a blanket or maybe they had to run out of their house without shoes. The symbol of the Red Cross gives them comfort and understanding. It's like pulling up with a giant billboard that says we're here to help. Sometimes when we arrive at a fire, there's, there's been a lot of tragedy already. I try to say centered because I know that if I'm calm through this experience, that's the best contribution I can make. It was five o'clock in the morning. I uh, hear some noise on the corridor, some people running. Then all my memories bring me to the horror. I need to go and check. I cannot be lazy. Well, open the door, I see this uh, orange smoke that hit me in my face. Close the door immediately and run to the kitchen to pick up some towel to throw it under the door because I know that's the only way I can save my life. I start shaking and uh, thinking, oh my gosh, am I gonna survive? Am I gonna leave this building alive? And at that moment, I realized that I'm suffocating. There is no way that I can be in this apartment anymore. So I rushed to the balcony and start screaming from the balcony for help. When you respond to a local disaster, there's a lot of things that you need to think about. The number of clients that you have, how big the event is or the size of it, different agencies that might be involved. The Redwood City Fire, I received a call early in the morning and uh, went directly to the evacuation center. There was a lot of chaos, a lot of concern. Some of the people had evacuated with, with hardly any clothes. As soon as I get off the louder, I realize I cannot walk. And I'm like, oh my goodness, at least somebody can hold my hand just to walk me just a couple meters. Victoria was a special case. This was her second fire. She had been through a previous apartment fire in Redwood City about three and a half months prior. So she actually knew what to expect, but it also kind of reactivated for her some of the trauma from that first fire. People from the Red Cross was talking to me, telling me everything will be okay, we're gonna help you, we care, and that's exactly what I needed at that moment. Luckily, I find the apartment, and Red Cross paid my first month rent. I moved to the second building, oh, which is getting fired 100 days later. And again, Red Cross came to help us, and um, I'm safe. Mama. People don't seem to realize what we do in disasters. They think of Red Cross as being mainly a place where they donate blood. They don't realize that we're called to respond to disasters where people are displaced and have no place to go. The reason you get out of a warm bed at night and go into the cold is because it's part of what we do. Disasters don't happen eight to five, Monday through Friday and our clients don't have needs just eight to five, Monday through Friday. The disaster calls are 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I've worked in the corporate world for over 30 years making a living, and when I retired, I wanted to make a difference, and Red Cross really enables me to do that. I'm gratefully thankful for all these people from Red Cross. These people are angels.